Well, I saw some more clips from Joe Rogan's most recent talk with Brett Weinstein on his podcast, and it's still pretty bad. So I'm going to talk about some more clips. Here we go. What you're about to hear from Joe Rogan is incredibly wrong, but once he's done talking about it, I'm going to explain exactly why. It's just bizarre that we let that slip through because they had decided at one point in time that vaccines create so many problems that there's no way they could sell these and be profitable and have a legal responsibility. And our government was like, all right. I don't think most people know that little fact that you just mentioned, that yeah. in fact they were granted immunity from liability because they said it was impossible to make safe vaccines. No, that is not what happened. So let's go through the actual history of the Vaccine Injury Compensation Program. The 1986 Vaccine Injury Compensation Program was formed to give people who were genuinely hurt or injured in some way from vaccines an easy way to receive financial compensation without having to go up against giant corporations in the courtroom. The lead-up to this program being formed was not because of any admission that vaccines can't be safe. It actually started with a documentary. In 1982, a documentary called DPT Vaccine Roulette aired on the Today Show and took off in popularity. The documentary made a bunch of claims about the safety of DPT vaccines, which are vaccines that are meant to protect you against diseases like diphtheria, tetanus, and pertussis, three different diseases caused by three different bacteria. And the documentary said that these vaccines were causing something called encephalopathies. Thanks to the popularity of this documentary, a bunch of parents thought that that's what happened to their child. So, they started suing pharmaceutical companies. Where have we seen it before that a bogus documentary influences public opinion? The documentary was in fact bogus, and we'll get there in a little bit. But because all these parents were suing pharmaceutical companies, the pharmaceutical companies started saying, we're not going to make these vaccines anymore, because vaccines are not very profitable for pharmaceutical companies. Something like a vaccine that you only take a few doses of and then you're protected for a long periods of time from a disease is not very profitable. In fact, on the global pharmaceutical market, vaccines make up a tiny percentage of pharma's total profits. It's much more profitable for pharmaceutical companies to have you take drugs that you take more regularly, or drugs that are really expensive that you receive during a hospital stay. And hospital stays involving really expensive drugs are exactly what vaccines prevent. I mean, just look at this wave of pertussis cases that happened in England and Wales in the late 70s. There were just over 100,000 cases, 36 deaths, 5,000 children were admitted to the hospital, and 50 required intensive care units. And this was following a decline in vaccination rate from about 80% down to 31%. And that decline was because of public perception, which was being fueled by a lot of misinformation. So the U.S. government signs the vaccine injury program into law in 1986, and this is for two reasons. The first of which is preventing citizens from suing pharmaceutical companies because they suspect that they were injured by a vaccine. This does not mean that pharmaceutical companies have full legal immunity when it comes to vaccines. They still are liable to put out a safe and effective product, and they can still absolutely be sued for neglect and fraud if they knowingly fail to do those things. The second reason, again, is to give citizens an easy avenue to receive financial compensations for what they think are vaccine injuries. This program will compensate a genuine harm, but also you don't have to prove that it's a genuine harm. You just have to prove that it was around the right time and there are no other obvious explanations. Despite this, most of the injuries that get awarded in this program are for shoulder injuries, where the needle just went too deep into a shoulder. And it should also be noted that there are several other countries that don't have a similar program and pharma doesn't have similar perceived protections from lawsuits. And yet we don't see masses of people suing pharmaceutical companies for vaccine injuries. So all you'd be doing if you got rid of this program is make it harder for people in America who think they've been injured by vaccines to get financial compensation. And by the way, that financial compensation does come from pharmaceutical companies. It comes from an excise tax that is placed on every vaccine that they produce. But the big mic drop that Joe Rogan needs to get through his head is that the whole lead up to the vaccine injury compensation program was based on misinformation started by a bogus documentary. These claims that DPT vaccines were causing encephalopathy 
were investigated by several different teams from several different institutions. And the body of evidence was reviewed by an independent group called the Institute of Medicine. And the conclusion was that the evidence was sufficient to reject a causal relationship between these vaccines and any encephalopathy. But you won't find this kind of nuance or actual facts of history on the Joe Rogan podcast. What you get are two grown adult men making inconsistent points and just confusing themselves. For example, you heard Joe Rogan claim that vaccine companies said that they can't continue to produce vaccines unless they have legal immunity because it's the only way they can be profitable. And then he says this. Like from the moment they're born, mm -hmm. they, want, they want to bang them up with vaccines. And it's in incredibly profitable. If vaccines were so profitable, it wouldn't matter whether or not they had legal immunity. But vaccines are not very profitable overall. And Brett Weinstein doesn't help because he just indulges Joe because he's a coward who doesn't want to challenge his conspiracy theories against people like me or other experts that are presented to him. He just wants to hide behind his circle of friends and talk to them all the time to make you think he's smart. Well, that's about it for this video. These two can't seem to get anything right about vaccines. I think Joe is actually trying and just fails while Brett knows better and just doesn't care. But that's just my opinion. Anyway, I'll probably be debunking at least one more clip from this god-awful podcast, so see you then.